Okay, this is a short lecture on some basic math needed for algorithms. So this is a picture of a logarithmic spiral. Okay, just and so some basic facts about logarithm first. So when you write LG, we mean log to the base two. Okay, LN means log to the base e. E is 2.71828. It goes on. Okay, and log normally when you say just log n, it means log to the base ten. And when you write LG raised to k n, actually it means LG n raised to k. And when we have iterated log like this LG LG n, it actually means it's right associative. Okay, this is a notation. And what is log? Log is basically the area under one upon x, and that is basically log. And log function grows very very slowly. It measures the number of digits in a number, and it goes to minus infinity at zero, and then and it keeps going up with n. It's monotonously increasing. And why do we need logs? Okay, so uh, before computers, people used to use log tables to do addition and multiplication. Okay, so what that means is log of a b is actually log of a plus log of b, and you can use any base c. Okay, they all similar or a similar uh, by some scaling factor, and then a is to n actually meant n times log of a, log of that. And reciprocal actually meant just reversing the sign. And then a is same as b raised to log to the base a. It is some simple facts about logarithms. We'll need them later on, but you should be familiar with all the properties of logarithms. There are lots of them, but these are the basic ones that we'll need: multiplication, division, and exponentiation. And you can actually the power. Of log is actually a equal to log, and how is it used? It's used in a slide rule also in log tables. The slide rule when you add add log two and log three, log two plus log three, you get log of six. So which is when you add it, add logs, you get you actually multiplying numbers. Similarly, when you subtract numbers, you'll probably get uh, division. So then there's an anti log. This is basically doing the anti log. Anti log is a log inverse. Okay, so that's about logs, and you can change to the base of log. So the properties we have is log n to the base a is actually is equal to log of n to the base b multiplied by the factor of the value of log of b to the base a, which is the same as if you can take the, this is the reciprocal of this, so which is the same as log of a to the base b. And log of b to the base a is a constant. Okay, for example, log of n to base ten is actually ln n over ln ten, which is ln log of ln of n into 0.4343. So log to the base ten is same as log to the base e multiplied by 0.4343. And you can use Python in this case. And then there's a package called NumPy. Import everything from NumPy. That means from NumPy, import everything. Then you can just say log 10 to the base e, and then you can get this number 0.4343. It comes from here. Okay, and you can do other stuff with Python if you're just needing a calculator. You can always type into Google if you really don't have Python or anything installed. So the uh, we look at a very slowly growing function. It's called the iterated log star function. And the definition of log star n is the number of times log function may be applied till it becomes less than one. Make n less than one. So you can see how it's growing. From minus infinity to one, you apply it zero times, it's less than one. And between one and two, you apply it once. Two and four, twice. Four and sixteen, thrice. So between sixteen and sixty-five thousand, four times. And then it becomes very slow, very very slow. Okay. It's called the iterated log star function. It's one of the slowest moving function, besides the uh, inverse Ackermann function that we saw earlier. So the other things we need a floor. Floor is basically the integer value of x, chopping off the the decimal part. Ceiling is basically you add 0.5 to it and take the the next higher number of x. So for example, 
uh, floor of 2.5 is 2 and a ceiling of 2.5 is 3 and then mod is basically the remainder remainder of x divided by y and then c and in different languages write x percentage y it gives you a mod you need a lot of modern number theory when you do number theory so 7 mod 4 would be 3 and this is another notation 7 is mod equal to 3 modulo 4 and you can also write like this 7 is equal to 3 modulo 4 in the if you count modulo 4 and then it works on negative numbers also except for modulo 0 is not defined because you can't divide by 0 it's undefined and minus 2 is 1 mod 3 and the uh, other operation besides mod is which is the remainder is a division operation the integer division x pi y integer part of it so for example 7 div 3 would be 2 and we ignore the decimal point and division by 0 is undefined and x mod y is basically x minus x div y into y so the integer part of that multiplied by y subtract that you get a fractional part and and that is the remove the fractional part you get the mod part exponents the property of exponents are not too many a is to 0 is always 1 a is to 1 is a a is to minus is reciprocal and a is to m into n is actually a is to a m into n and it's not associative it's not equal to okay mn is not equal to mn is not the same as m raised to n okay and a raised to m into a raised to n is equal to a raised to m plus n and then once we have a really nice uh, equation from complex number the e raised to i pi is equal to minus 1 it relates i e i the complex number and pi and it and this comes from complex numbers and kind uh, properties of sine and cos and n factorial is basically 1 to n and it is bounded from above by n raised to n it's a similar uh, growing uh, growth rate because it's n times n but the smaller numbers other function will be this Fibonacci sequence it's a function that for f0 is 0 f1 is 1 and the next number is defined by the sum of the last two numbers so you take 0 1 starting then 0 plus 1 is 1 1 plus 1 is 2 and 1 plus 2 is 3 and then if you draw rectangles like 1 2 3 like that and then you join them together you get a golden ratio so golden ratio is like the most pleasing uh, rectangle is used in paintings and stuff and in architecture and then if you if you use uh, f a square root and function you can define golden ratio by fn by phi phi raised to n minus phi dash raised to n divided by square root of phi which is approximately if you ignore the phi dash which is phi raised to n by square root of phi where phi is basically 1 plus square root of phi divided by 2 is 1.68 and phi dash is 1 minus square root of phi divided by 2 which is 0.68 so this gets smaller and this gets larger and this is similar to exponential function and it's used in a lot of times when you are uh, building uh, data structures using the last two values okay so it will appear later on and there's a lot of properties there's even a journal Fibonacci quarterly de dedicated to Fibonacci sequence and it's fun to play around with it occurs in all over nature so for example the growth of a tree the way it grows is, is a, a Fibonacci number and pi the way pineapple the, the things on pineapple the cells on pineapple are growing is also given by the Fibonacci number this is 5, this is 8, 13, the way you count and anyway we will look at it later, you can look at it on Wikipedia and the books that you need to refer to are Math for Computer Science is a PDF file by Lemon and from MIT and of course Corman a book and rest is on Wikipedia and you can use Google to find it thank you